Welcome to the sixth video in the 10 Reasons You Need Fusion series. In this video, we'll be looking at a couple of additional key reasons for using Fusion, that of paint and tracking. We all need to retouch a clip from time to time, either to paint out an unwanted element or, more often than not, to add things in. But paint in Fusion offers a lot more than just that. If you are doing motion graphics, for example, you can take advantage of the animation capabilities of the paint tool to create some fantastic effects. And then there is tracking, stabilization of a shot, right up to four point screen replacement. Fusion makes it all a breeze. Finally, tracking data can be imported from third party software in full 3D space so that you can take advantage of the superb 3D toolset contained within Fusion. Let me show you what I mean. The first thing we are going to look at is the simple retouch of a clip, and I have a shot here of a snow scene and connected a paint node to it. What I want to do is get rid of the toboggan, so in paint mode I'll just adjust the brush here to make it a reasonable size, and then switch to clone mode. Marking where I want to clone from, and then to, I can then very easily paint out the toboggan with a nice soft edge, going back over some of the strokes to hide any repeat patterns. Nice and straightforward. Of course, I can be a lot more accurate than that if I need to, and in this example, say I wanted to restore the whole shot and replace all the light bulbs. This time I'll zoom right in and using a smaller brush, precisely clone a working light over the socket next to it that doesn't have one. Again, pretty simple, and in a short space of time using this technique, I can get a brand new shot fully restored and looking like this. We're going to have a look at some cleanup work now, and it's worth pointing out that you have a choice of stroke and multi-stroke modes using paint. And this is designed to make the process as fast as possible without the lag in updating frames so often associated with rotor work in other software. For example, say I wanted to just quickly get rid of some of the background in this difference mat. Using stroke mode, I can airbrush over the left side of the shot, and then with a second stroke do the same for the right hand side. Playing that back now, the strokes are performed on every frame, which of course makes this a very fast process for retouch. However, they are also essentially still live, so if I wanted to go back and edit or delete one of them, like this, I can easily do so. This gives you huge flexibility and speed when working on a job like this. Now we're going to turn to multi-stroke, which is the ideal mode for working on the detail of a cleanup like this. So say I wanted to frame by frame retouch the area around the actor's feet. If the feet are moving all over the place, I don't want to use stroke mode since my retouch would appear on every frame. But with multi-stroke, I can paint at very high speed and very accurately since it doesn't bother to save every stroke. Here you can see the first few frames replayed, and just how quick that was. And importantly, it doesn't matter what resolution you're working in, it's always incredibly fast. We're going to take a look at tracking now. Fusion has an incredibly powerful range of trackers, and this of course is something you use all the time when compositing. A classic example is how you might apply a video effect to a piece of footage to either liven it up or focus the viewer's attention onto a specific character. In this piece, we want to bring out the girl on the right side of the shot and apply a creative video effect to the rest. To do this, I've tracked her nose, and if I show you the tracking detail, there you can see the tracker and its path, and down here you can see the element that's being tracked. All of this can be adjusted for maximum control. Choosing to limit which RGB colors you want to use can make an enormous difference to the success of the final result. Having set up the track, I've then added in a color correction, together with a directional blur, and then applied the tracking data to a soft edge mask in order to key the original shot back over itself. And this is the result, pretty effective and easily achieved. Something you tend to do quite a lot of in motion graphics is to overlay text onto some background footage, and this is a game where tracking comes in extremely useful, with the numbers bedded into this industrial shot as a good example. I've set up a similar piece here of a cloud fly-through, over which I'm going to add some text to show just how sensitive the tracker really is. What I've done is track the furthermost bit of cloud, since that's where I want the text to go. 
Looking again at the tracking data, it's worked perfectly first time, despite there hardly being any detail in it at all. Here's the text that the tracker has been applied to, and here is the shot with the foreground clouds keyed back over the top, so that the text appears in the distance. Continuing on the theme of tracking, we're going to have a look at something a bit more complicated. Here's a shot of a man walking down the street, and here's some CG money which is supposed to be flying out of his pocket. The interesting thing here is that in this particular case, looking at the track and just zooming in a little, we can see that it's still only a single point track. But I've tracked his belt rather than the pocket itself since the pocket is continually changing shape. Being able to offset the tracking data from something near the source that makes more sense to track in the first place is quite easy in Fusion. Plus the other thing here is that he walks behind a couple of street objects, and the tracking targets will have disappeared. That's no problem for Fusion either, since you can stop and start tracks and Fusion will use in-betweening to fill in the gaps. Off-screen tracking is also there for you to use, so pretty much anything you can throw at Fusion, the tracker will solve. Tracking data can also in this case be applied to garbage mats and masks to key the lamppost and parking meter back over in the final comp. Moving on to four point tracking, it's quite common these days to have to composite some sort of footage or graphics onto the screen of an iPhone, iPad or just replace signs etc. And here is an obvious example of just that, complete with numbered tracking markers that also have to be removed incidentally. No problem for Fusion, here is the tracking data, this time with four tracks being processed simultaneously. Once again, points can be precisely offset if the corners are not exactly where you want the image to end up. Then the same shot with the markers replaced. And finally, the finished composite with our previous footage tracked in, together with the reflections on the iPad maintained as well. It's also worth noting that you can ingest data from external planar trackers if that's what's available to you, and we'll have a quick look at that next. Two final examples I just want to go through with tracking show the real power of what can be achieved in Fusion. Here's a handheld camera shot, pretty common these days in everything from movies to commercials, documentaries, broadcast titles, etc. So how do you deal with them? A common approach is to track this sort of shot externally and there are all manner of software solutions out there these days to solve something like this. The important thing though is that Fusion can import all the major tracking formats and then apply it to other elements. In this case some internally generated 3D text. This is the text with the tracking data applied in full 3D space and then composited over the background plate using a whole back mat for the bushes and chair. If we want to have a closer look at the data itself in a bit more detail, then this second example shows just that. This is a shot supplied from Buju together with its tracking data, and once again the object is to combine it with some text in 3D space. Opening up the merge node here, we get a good look at the point cloud that's been generated together with the text that's been composited plus the camera move itself. So a really clear display of what's going on here. Any of the points can be accessed inside Fusion and other elements can be precisely attached to any of them should you so wish. From that the text can be rendered out in true 3D space and then composited over the background plate to produce the finished piece. So there you have it, a great paint capability and phenomenal tracking. Fusion makes it simple to retouch shots frame by frame with the option of multi-stroke to make it even faster seamlessly add in new elements and create full paint animations for motion graphics. Of course with tracking, stabilizing a shot couldn't be easier and Fusion has the toolset to do full multi-point tracking for screen and sign replacement. Finally, as you've also just seen, tracking data can be imported from third-party software in full 3D space for easy handling of even the most challenging shots and then if required, exported again. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be going through 3D environments. Meanwhile, don't forget to take a closer look at our website at www.ionline.com, plus the Ion YouTube channel, where you can find a whole host of news, events and information that will show you why Ion Software is a world leader in compositing.